Okay, this is an apology. I forgot to turn the recording on and we're already one screen into this. So we're backing up here. These guys are going to be brilliant. Okay, class. What does it mean if you're studying combinatorics? Thank you so much. We won't be including you again. <laughs> the study of combinatorics is how many ways there are to do something. So in this first one, we very quickly went, oh, the new food stand across the street in the park is going to serve meal deals with hamburgers and hot dogs, and then you get one side, you can have chips, french fries, or pie. And as you can see, we drew the lines to connect and discovered there would be six different meals, which means we simply took two choices times three choices, which made six ways. Okay, class, what is this bottom one showing us? How many? Yeah. In this case, how many ways can cars be built? So we had 12 colors, we had two fabrics, we had three option packages. So if you multiply those together, we find out there's 72 different versions of a car that can be built. Okay. And they all think this is too simple, and they were worried about what's coming. Okay. So we're actually going to learn. Actually, I should tell you this: you're going to learn permutations, and then here in a couple minutes, we're going to do what are called combinations. Permutations are different than combinations. What was the key factor about permutations here? That there were patterns. Permutations are patterns. It's absolutely crucial. P for permutation, P for pattern. Which I just. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, story. Okay. Because when we do combinations, obviously combinations are not going to care about what patterns we make. So we wanted to arrange four people in a line. So why do I have four, three, two, one? Yeah. Okay, so I had, when I choose the first person to stand first in the line, there's four choices. Then when I choose the next spot, there are three choices, two choices, and then one person left. If you multiply that, then the fundamental counting principle says there are 24 choices for this. Okay, now is where we were ready to start talking. Okay, we're doing linear permutations, how to arrange them in a line. But I just asked, how many ways could I make? I mean, seriously, if you all have painted this chapter, I'll make you do this. Sure. How many different patterns could you guys stand in? All 13 of you, if we line up across the back of the room. Uh, how many of us? 13. I already did it. Who just did it? Okay, you're saying it would be 13 times 12 times 11 times 10. Is this going to be fun to punch in your calculator? No. Not really, but I punched one other in my calculator. This is going to be unfun to punch in your calculator because we would have to do this all the way down to 1, okay? Okay, Brad got 6 trillion something. Wow. Okay, you're going to discover that's a pain to type in. Okay. Mathematicians wanted a better way to type that in than have to type 13 times 12 times 11 times 10. So they invented a notation to say, hey, start at 13 and multiply all the way down. You probably have seen this before. They write 13 and they put an excla exclamation point behind it. Okay, its name is a factorial. You do, you type 13 factorial, which I forgot, look, <laughs> I'm borrowing your calculator, uh, menu, yes, menu number five probability, first choice is factorial. So. Menu, probability, factorial. And do I even want to ask you to name me, tell me what the number was? Okay, read me digits one at a time loudly. Six. Okay. Well, nope. So that was six. That's a two now. It's so that's six. You're right, six trillion, two hundred twenty-seven. No, six billion, two hundred twenty-seven. 
Well, it's up. Have you guys ever seen? I'm going to make you all stand here until you all make every possible pattern. You're evil. Well, I will be dead before we have to finish that. Oh, you may be too. Because <laughs> you know how hard we go to draft up what pattern you made? You go before us and we just leave them. Okay, we can lie there. Okay. So the point is, the factorials get very, you only have 13 factorial, they get large very, very fast. So there are some issues with that. But you actually have just discovered here method number one. There are four methods for doing permutations in a line, making patterns in a line. I want those four math methods on the back of your journal. You'll discover they're back there. Okay, and so method number one is arranging all the objects. You just discovered how to do it. So if you want to do all the objects in a line, it's just that many factorial. We write it as n factorial as far as the formula goes. However many there are, you do that many factorial. So actually, I should have read down here. So I asked you how many ways can 12 drill team members be arranged in a kick line? What's the it's going to be 12 factorial, and it's going to be a very large number because we just discovered 13 is huge. Four, seven, nine, nine. Say that again, 179. Four, 479. Four, seven, okay. So only 479 million. They should be able to have variety. <laughs> that actually is the correct way to do it. So. All right. <laughs> you are just a man of so many talents. <laughs> okay. So, method number two. What if I don't want to use all the objects I have? I've got this large group of objects, but I'm only going to make smaller patterns out of using some of them. No so in this case, how many uh, are there, how many ways are there to arrange seven members of this class in the front row? Okay. Well, actually, we'll assume that all, if all, on a day, if you're all 14 here, there are two ways you can do this, long way and short way. You can do it by drawing out the little blanks and going, well, I got seven seats here. So how many choices would I have in the first seat? 14, and then I would have 13, but would I go all the way down to 1? There's only 7 deaths. So you can do it this way. You could sit and write it out. It's not bad if you're not using, don't have very many places, and you can multiply it up. But there's also, once again, because we do this quite a bit, mathematicians wanted a shorter notation for doing this, so they have to write all that out and sit there and time them forever. The notation they use is what we call NPR. Okay. <laughs> nice try. Okay, N, N is your total number of objects. R is the number of objects you're going to use. P, of course, stands for what? Pattern. But their official name? Permutation. So the P, the, cat, the P is for permutation. Thank you. Yes, I Okay. So in this case, the faster way to do this notation would have been for you to go Okay, how many total objects do I have here to arrange in this front row? How many of you are there? There are 14. The, the 14 is a subscript in front of the P, and now how many of you would I be arranging at one time? Seven. So I would be asking it to be 14 to 7, which would give you the same answer as we got here with blank. Okay, you will find you have that notation once again, it should be a hit mass probability. What do you think under mass probability? What do you suppose you want? Permutation. Could it be permutation? 
Okay, on your calculator, when you hit, you're going to go mass probability two permutation. It's going to pop NPR on the screen. It, you're going to, and then it puts a parenthesis. You have to then put in the parenthesis the numbers you want to calculate. So in this case, you have to put 14, comma, 7. Yes, you do have to put the comma oh, separate. Uh, Otherwise, you think it's 147. Yeah. Yeah. Your comma is up on the yeah, right down the bottom left corner. And I should have paid attention. What number did it give you? Uh, 172, So still, 17 million patterns. We could make out of you all in the front row alone. That's a lot of patterns. That's a lot of patterns. So when you're reading a problem as running permutations or patterns, your thing is you have to decide: do they want me to draw the object? Do they want me to pick just a small group from the larger group? Or there are two special cases. Okay, children. I feel like I have. Thank you. <laughs> you can spell Mississippi. <laughs> what if your what if you are your pattern has some objects in it that are alike? If I had twins or triplets sitting in this room, you can't tell them apart. You have one where it has been, the other one does not Okay, so you could you're going to make them distinguishable. But if I'm arranging like letters in the word Mississippi, I got four S's in there. So what do I do when I have some objects that are going to look alike? Because, like right now, if I switch these two S's, if I switch their position, is it going to change the pattern? No. 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 Uh, so should I get more or less if I have a like object in it? Should I get a larger answer or a smaller answer? I should get less, yes. It turns out what you do is you take the total number of objects you've got, you do that factorial like you would have normally done, you then whatever factorial, but because you have alike objects, you divide by the amount of alikes you have, and I'll explain what this means with numbers in just a sec. Alike, alike. If you have more than one thing that's alike, like here we have S's that are alike, we have I's that are alike, and we have T's that are alike. So we're gonna have three things on the bottom of ours, yeah. Okay, what are four objects that do? Okay. <laughs> Okay, two, four, six, eight, ten. There's eleven letters in Mississippi. So you would do the top as eleven factorial. Now, on the bottom you go, okay, S's. How many S's were alike? Four. Four. So you're going to divide by four factorial. That's your S's. Okay, what else do I have alike? I got four I's. And two P's. And if it's not alike, you don't do anything. You have to worry about it. It's only the ones that look alike you have to worry about. <laughs> well, it doesn't spell sip. Now, how are you going to punch that in your calculator? Yeah. You're going to do a fraction key, do your fraction key, go do 11 factorial, 4 factorial, 4 factorial. Okay, guys, what is 2 factorial? 2 times 1 is 2. Don't bother to go. If you got a two, there's no use wasting your time to go get factorial on it because two factorial is two. <laughs> so you just multiply factorial together. Then yeah, you yeah, you just put it all in and let it crunch the number. Yeah, give me the answer. I'll write you have it. Okay, so that's not so terrible then. Thirty-four thousand six hundred and fifty different patterns of the word Mississippi. I could have you list those on paper. 
The biggest problem would be, once again, you'd have to find some systems to be able to keep track of what patterns you had done and had done. That's where it would get. It would be easier to learn to program a computer and program it to do it for you. Much easier. All right, so tell me here. Let's see if you catch this coming at you. Oh, yay! Thank you.